definitely proud to be black, and that definitely grew on me over the years. So, yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay, so my name is Rache Jamestown. I am 30 years old. I was born on a Friday, March 9th, 1990. My ethnicity, I am Trinidadian. So I was born here in Winnipeg, but both of my parents originate from Trinidad. Been there a couple times. That also helped me resonate a little bit with as to why I am the person I am here in Canada. I started dancing when I was really young, probably like four or five years old. And I was always really a hyper kid. So <laughs> I actually started modeling when I was really, really little, and like literally being carried down the runway and doing fashion shows at like three years old. But I always also loved performing. I was that kid that was always at uh, the family functions, like hairbrush singing or jumping on a bed and doing something just to draw attention to myself. So clearly my parents were like, she needs to go on a stage. So I think that's how that all started. But um, yeah, I've been doing it for a while and glad it, that they made that decision for me because, well, here I am, 20 something years later, still dancing. <laughs> styles, I have done quite a few different styles. I mean, I started out doing the regular ballet, jazz, tap kind of thing and then realized I really like tap actually. I think it was because of the musicality and just kind of the presence that it gave. It was very a confident presence with not doing a whole lot. I didn't really formally start taking hip hop until I was like an adult. So I kind of started a little bit when I lived in Toronto, taking some drop-in classes. There was a lot of big names out there that used to come by. And I think it was like Luther Brown's class where I was like, wow, like the way that people, people were like dancing on the furnace and everything. Like everybody just wanted to be there, be a part of it, they didn't care. It was just a community that just wanted to just like Vibe. And I was like, okay, this is really cool. And then when I moved back to Winnipeg, I uh, actually volunteered at In The Zone and I just watched all of the dances and decided what I really wanted to do hip hop wise. And there I started formally training. Other than hip hop, I was actually doing burlesque dancing with a team and we had got hired for functions and we got to put on our own shows at like Perk Theater and stuff. So that was really cool within burlesque came heels. And then I started to see how that community and that uh, genre was growing and in all different styles, hip hop heels and you know, more sultry heels. And there was just so much area of variety in that kind of thing. So lately that's been my two main things that I've been sticking towards, kind of like the hip hop style and the heels genre. I really stopped training like recreationally and consistently probably when I was a teenager. And I kind of thought that was going to be it for me because that's when most of my other friends fell off. You know, you kind of fall out of the setting and wanting to go to class every day and following that structure. You're a teenager, right? Like, you're rebellious, whatever. But then when I moved away and it kind of became more of an outlet as opposed to a chore every week that I used to get dropped off to, um, I really was like, this could be cool. Like, there's no right or wrong way to do this as opposed to all the things that I was told in the past. But it, I think the thing that kept me going really with dance is that there's no right or wrong way to do it. And there's just so many ways to express yourself through movement. And no matter what song you're dancing to, it could be like a hype, you wanna get out some energy, maybe you have like a crazy day, you just wanna let loose, or maybe you're upset and you wanna put on a slower track and just vibe and not think about what your next movement is and just kind of let it be free. So I think that's definitely what kept me going is that there's so much you can do with it. Um, Romeo actually was my first hip hop teacher back at RDC in Garden City. And obviously he's uh, known to put on in the zone and run that whole area of things. So I reached out to him and I was like, yeah, I just got back. I want to volunteer. I just want to see what the hip hop community is like. Like what, are, is there a difference? Are people doing certain styles? Are people just kind of doing one thing? And coming back from Toronto, I saw so many different varieties and so many different outlooks on it. So when I came back, I just, I really thought that uh, there was one team that stuck out to me and Thankfully, that team kind of just developed into the rest of my dance community life here in Winnipeg. I saw Legacy and their, their dance, it stuck to me in a way where it sent a message. And that was kind of like what I was talking about earlier with the, the outlet and the different ways to portray stories through dance. And I really felt connected to what they did. So I found out when they had their auditions and I showed up and I tried and it worked. And that's when I really started learning the different uh, techniques and styles within hip hop. So, you know, different uh, house movements that we do across the floor, different grooving techniques that we do, or, you know, like 
just little different types of things like that because like I said until I was an adult I really just did it on my own so that was really the first time where I got to really dive into it and learn a lot about how to articulate that and be a part of something bigger than myself and you know participate on stage and in lots of competitions and travel and it was just it was a crazy experience and it was so fun and I met a lot of people I'm sure I'm going to have around for the rest of my life so yeah absolutely that's probably my favorite part about my dance community since I came back it's very different than the recreational classes I did growing up seeing the same students every day you know some of them want to be there you know some of them just got dropped off to be there it's a lot different than doing it as adults where everyone's really committed and really doing it for the right reasons and because they want to not because they have to <laughs> okay so I think it kind of not only to dance applied to just my how my whole outlook on like my culture and my ethnicity in general. You know, when you grow up, even throughout uh, elementary school, I went to a school that was predominantly white kids. If there was anybody else that was not white, they were like a foreign exchange student or something, right? So like, but, so I also couldn't relate to them because I grew up in Canada. So I related more to, you know, the majority of the school. And that was kind of the same like dance, you know, I was always, I guess highlighted as you can say and I don't know if it was because of I don't know what it was because of but I know that I always was and I took it as a positive it definitely had a different change and outlook on like life and the dance community in general when you move to a city like Toronto where it's a huge culture shock you see people that look like you every day and you come from a city where unless you go to certain areas of the city you don't see anybody that looks like you so it was cool to just learn about how people genuinely appreciated the culture and the different ethnicities out there and you know people that didn't look like you wanted to learn about your culture and how you moved and why you did what you did and it was really cool because it kind of made me feel different when I came back I was like okay well we got a lot of stuff going on so I learned a little bit about myself and now I can take that and learn more and like mishmash it and like do my own thing which is kind of how I started teaching I think and the styles that I teach and how my choreo comes out when I do it. It's not really a one set thing. It's kind of a mixture of what I learned when I was young, experience when I was away, and then now that I come back and all the things that I've been training and technically getting to learn, I can like intertwine all of them. So definitely changed a bit, but I, in a great way. I hear what you're saying, because there definitely was, and I can touch on that more of when I tried to move from like the recreation part of dancing and doing it so often and being highlighted, as I had mentioned before, and I went to a technical world such as RWB. You took ballet there, you know, I felt literally like a fish out of water, even in the jazz classes where I thought it was something that I excelled in. I felt like a fish out of water. I felt very kind of isolated a little bit, like you found your one or two people that you stuck to, but it didn't feel like the recreation classes that I was going to before. And I think maybe that's why I stopped after that. Like my first competition was when I was 14, um, doing a tap dance with RWB. And I don't know, I think maybe after that, maybe that's why I kind of just like looked back at it and I was just like, okay, well, I love dancing and I like it for this reason, but these people want me to like it for this reason. And now I'm not sure if I want to do it at all. And then you just kind of like, back away from it and then like, like I said it didn't really kick back up again until I found another reason to do dance as opposed to the reason why I was doing it before. So so what you can expect if you're going to take a class of mine you're going to get that opportunity to add your own vibe to it because that's one thing that I felt I kind of struggled on a little bit um, coming into like a choreo kind of world um, after just moving so freely and naturally doing whatever. I felt that I always had to look like what the teacher was doing and once you start to uh, like I guess get the chance to experience and uh, float through different styles you realize that it's not so much about looking as what the teacher is doing as opposed to trying to pick up the skeleton or the message that your teacher is trying to teach you it's going to look different we're all different for a reason and you know no one should really look the same quote unquote I mean, of course, if you're going on stage, that's a little bit different. No judge zone, like it's very comfortable. I, I encourage people to turn on their cameras if they want to. And I just, yeah, it's a, it's more of a vibe as opposed to like a, here's some choreo and I want you guys to get it perfect. I don't care if you do it perfect. I just want you to have fun, the music's on, just move around as long as you're there and you're joining me, that's really, that's good enough for me, so. So some advice that I can give for the future coming up in the dance community 
especially for you know people that feel like an outsider or look like me who know we're not the majority in the city or we're not the majority you know right really in the community but just follow your truth like even recently for myself I started teaching soca classes and I literally have so much fun <laughs> in these soca classes and for y'all that, that don't know is uh, soca is a genre of music and dance that originated in Trinidad well I wasn't born there but it's apparently in my blood because I have a blast doing it so my advice really for the generation that's coming up is just follow your truth you know you don't always have to look like the person beside you you don't have to be posting videos like your peers just stick to what you want to do and you know there's going to be an audience out there for you and even if there isn't it doesn't matter because at least you're going to feel good about everything that you produce and yeah i think it's just don't be scared don't be scared to jump in and don't be scared to try new things and no one's doing it it's okay if you want to try and be the first one to do it like maybe you're just going to set a trend it's it's all good just don't be scared take advantage dig dive deep in yourself and really try to you know put out your best effort whatever that may be for yourself it doesn't really matter what other people are doing so i guess i only started teaching last summer and it was here so shout out to muse and thank you guys for just being a very safe place and um, just to share, and just like I said, be yourself. So that's awesome. And just shout out to the whole black community. Like we're out here, we're trying. Last year was a big breakthrough for us. We're really trying to let these people know like black lives matter. <laughs> so.